are not related. <laughs> but we have Lynn Harris, who is a dietitian, and she uh, works with the Legion also. And she's also a coach, a wellness coach as well. So um, I'm going to leave this to Lynn. So I'm sure you, when it comes to nutrition, and we have a dietitian in front of you, I know you have lots of questions for her. So, but I'm actually going to head out today. I'm not going to stay. All so right. pick her brain. All right, <laughs> All right enjoy. Okay, so um, did everybody get a, a, did you get one? Nope. Yeah, no. Okay. Everybody got one? No. no. Okay. Here, I'm going to leave these. Okay. Uh, um, so, um, so some of you I may have spoken to on the phone if you participated at that point in time when you needed to make your wellness calls and so forth, um, which, you know, the calls are always great fun. We can kind of go over, go over uh, um, different diet issues, but, you know, it all starts in the grocery store. Um, that's kind of where... It all starts. It's sort of like, you know, charging yourself up and getting your ammunition. Um, it really makes a difference uh, what your mindset and your attitude is when you walk into the grocery store, um, as well as what uh, what you choose. Because it's a, um, it's a real jungle now. It's the grocery store of um, yesterday is, is far gone. I can, you know, I'm almost 60 years old and I can remember shopping, grocery shopping with my mother when I was little and the grocery store today is vastly different than the grocery stores that I was used to growing up. Um, mostly because there are tens and hundreds of thousands of products now that were never available to us when we were little. So, um, so uh, it's really important to just kind of be an informed consumer just like with anything else. So maybe I need to be over here. <coughs> there we go. So if you think about your grocery cart um, and you look at the grocery cart, um, I'm not here to say that any one food is bad. I'm not here to say that you can't ever eat potato chips, cookies, anything like that. Everything has its place. Um, but you have to realize that these foods Pretty much, um, these foods on the left are the foods that are found in the perimeter of the grocery store. These are foods that are found in the inter-aisle inter part of the grocery store. Uh, there are probably, I haven't done the math, but roughly about 28,900 calories on the left and almost 37,000 calories on the right. Um, mostly due to the fact that foods that go through this processing uh, and are processed sort of in the forms that um, that we see here, the Pop-Tarts, the, you know, macaroni and cheese and things like that versus making those things from scratch, perhaps. Um, when they do the processing, they add all kinds of fat and calories. So, just you just you just have to make yeah the difference in fat is huge probably like seven times the difference so you just have to keep in mind that really it's a psychological game that the food manufacturers play with us when you walk into the grocery store pretty much everything that you really need is along the four walls or the three walls okay and they make us walk through this jungle to kind of get to where we want to go. The other thing that they do is they change it up on purpose so that you have to walk around to look for what you um, what you think you need. They sort of you know ch change the game for us so that you know where the juices used to be now they're you know at the back of the store in the left hand corner instead of in the right and you have to do this crisscrossing to try and find what you need. They um, the food manufacturers jockey for space in the grocery store, and they mess with us like that. They try to trick us into buying their products. So just keep all of that in mind. Okay. So aisle by aisle, you have your produce and your dairy and your uh, the protein foods um, that are usually 
along the back of the store, the meats and the eggs and milk, yogurt and so forth, um, grains and beverages uh, usually have aisles committed, um, the grocery stores have aisles committed to grains and beverages, and then there are fats, the bakery, the sugars, those the fats, the bakeries, and the sugars are the areas where um, you know we need to be cautious because in a lot of cases um, there's very little room um, for us to to put those things into our meal plan. Um, you have to be good about doing the math and making sure that you can um, afford it. And we'll talk about ways to afford some of those things. Um, uh, in a few in a few slides from now, and of course there's always frozen meals, which the frozen food aisle um, really can be your friend, especially for people with limited time. Um, some of the frozen um, foods can come at a higher cost, um, but um, they certainly would have a place if you really are in a jam and have to fix a quick meal. You can pop it into the microwave or put it into the oven. Um, and it takes the guesswork out of planning a, a, a balanced meal. I'm not saying that all frozen meals would necessarily be good, but there are some um, some guidelines that you can use to pick a, a good frozen um, frozen meal, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So three quick things to check when you're going into the grocery store. Number one, you want to find the nutrition facts label. Forget what all of the rest of the stuff on the packaging says. The nutrition facts label will not lie to you. The food manufacturers might try to, uh, they might try to trick you into thinking that a product is low fat or low sugar or, um, you know, has fewer calories or, or so forth. But the nutrition facts label won't, cannot lie. It's regulated. They have to, um, they have to demonstrate all of the nutrition facts on this label. So calories and serving size is the first thing that you want to look at because in some cases a food item might actually have two and a half or more servings. So you have to look at the calories um, by identifying the serving size first. Okay, so if you have an entire package that's two and a half servings um, and a, a serving is 140 calories, you have to multiply that by two and a half. So um, keep that in mind. Ideally, you want to make sure that you check the fat and sodium to keep the fat and sodium at 5% or less of the daily value, and the label will help you do that. And then also, you want to um, you want to make sure that um, you are including fiber because fiber, for uh, a lot of different reasons, notably diabetes control, um, for gastrointestinal motility and control, fiber is really important. So you want to make sure that you look at fiber as well. So. Fruits and vegetables, especially now when fruits and vegetables, there are a lot of fruits and vegetables that are in season. You'll find a lot of really fresh fruits and vegetables um, of all kinds of varieties um, in the grocery store. The produce section is really an important um, place to start for, um, for a weight loss show. And it's really, it's really personal preference. Um, I, I, have a, an aversion to certain fruits that sometimes I try to force myself to include every now and then just for variety, but you have to do what works for you. You have to find yourself in this aisle, and just because, you know, if broccoli isn't your thing, that's fine. You can find other um, vegetables that, you know, will still help you to get the nutrients that you need. Um, it's not saying, I'm not saying that you have to eat all of these things all the time. You just, there's a huge array of things um, in the produce aisle. Um, you just have to um, try not to have blinders on, just try to, uh, try to try new things, be open to trying new things. So fruits and vegetables, for the most part, you can't go wrong. 
uh, the more you eat, the fewer calories you're likely to consume. Um, they're packed and loaded with nutrients, vitamins and minerals um, at a very low calorie price tag. Now, um, that said, some fruits naturally have naturally more sugar, fruit sugar, than others. Um, so their caloric value might be a little higher, but for the most part, most um, fruits and, and vegetables are a good choice for a weight, uh, weight management regimen. Um, they're also very good sources of fiber, and they're naturally low in fat. So how many vegetables a day? Um, I have this measuring cup here. Um, most people need to eat two and a half cups, okay? Uh, that's not a lot. Um, so we're talking, uh, you know, um, if you go home and you take out a measuring cup, um, a one cup or a half a cup serving is usually, a half a cup serving is a standard serving. It's really not um, that much. So most of us can do that without too much of a problem. Recommended amounts for fruit tend to vary, and it tends to vary, um, you know, I'm talking about the general population. Um, fruits for people who might have issues with their blood sugar and so forth, um, the amounts tend to vary just a little bit. But again, most people need to eat about two cups. And this includes juice. Um, it includes, uh, you know, 100% juice. Um, and it includes, of course, just the, um, the fruits that you see here, like the strawberries and blueberries and so forth. So most people, when you kind of think about it in, in the volume that, uh, of needed servings, most people say, really, it's pretty doable. But not all of us do it. <laughs> so. OK, so you want to make sure that when you talk about things like fruit, you compare um, apples to apples because this show this slide really shows that the um, the more processed a food is the higher the caloric value is so if you take a fresh apple the calories per ounce is 14 but apple cinnamon cheerios is 120 calories per ounce so just because the word apple is there it doesn't mean that you know it's as good as the the raw thing. And keep in mind also that the fresh apple is also giving you the benefit of fiber, which you're not really getting in an apple danish. Okay? And it's also cheaper than an apple danish. Yeah? Um, you're talking about juices. Mm -hmm. okay, like my doctor said, like, prefer that you don't have juice because mm -hmm. to have one glass of juice would probably be equivalent to like eight oranges to right. have one glass. Right. So. Right. Well, and so the juice sometimes, unless you're talking about like 100% juice, the volume actually that you need for to be equivalent to one fruit serving is really low. Yeah. A lot of people fill a huge, right. you know, and, and if you look at the caloric value of, of the juice, um, it is a lot higher, like a, a, an eight, a, yeah, I didn't see that on there. a four ounce apple serving juice. of apple juice and an apple, you can see it here that the, um, the apple is only 14 calories. Right. Um, you're getting all the benefit of the fruits, or the, the fruits, vitamins and minerals and fiber at a very low calorie cost. So um, all of the, like even the applesauce, there are how many, I mean, I don't know if you're applesauce eaters, but if you go into the grocery store and you find those individual applesauce cups, if you look, yeah, if you look at the uh, nutrition facts label for those applesauce cups, it varies widely. Um, you know, try to uh, eliminate as much sugar as you can, um, get unsweetened applesauce. Um, cinnamon doesn't add any calories. Um, if you can get unsweetened applesauce and maybe add some cinnamon to it for some flavor, you're saving yourself a lot of um, a lot of calories over the the brand that might be sweetened with um, cinnamon also. So um, so just keep in mind that you know you want to make sure that just because something says <coughs> apple um, like applesauce doesn't necessarily mean that it comes at a low price. Uh, calorie price tag. There we go. 
Um, beware of sugar in canned items. Canned fruits and vegetables are perfectly fine. They, uh, depending on what kind of um, frozen storage you might have, if you're, um, if you're not able to keep a lot of frozen vegetables on hand, canned vegetables might be, um, uh, might be an option for you. But just make sure that you look at the, um, the, for the fruits, for example, make sure that you look at the sugar because a lot of them are packed in syrup or packed in, even if they're packed in juice, the sugar content can be really high. Um, if you find a great deal on canned fruit, my suggestion is to rinse it in a colander, get rid of all of that sugar um, or most of that sugar, and it's um, still a wise choice. Similarly for canned vegetables, canned vegetables, if any of you have ever processed, uh, if any of you have ever um, um, uh, participated in canning vegetables, um, salt is a big part of the canning process. And so canned vegetables tend to be really high in sodium. Um, all you have to do is rinse the vegetables in a colander before you cook them. Um, you get rid of a lot of that processing sodium, and they're perfectly fine for you. Which is um, to, to some degree, and certain, certain vegetables like peas um, are naturally high in sodium. So, um, but anywhere you can, either buy the lower sodium or lower sugar variety, or the fruit that's packed in its own juice. Um, um, but rinsing them is really um, a great idea because you tend to get rid of the excess calories in sodium. Um, studies do show that um, when you eat um, a salad as your first course, um, you tend to fill up on um, low-fat produce type of things. You tend to eat less of your, um, of your actual main meal. So um, it is, uh, you, you do tend to consume fewer calories if you have a, a side <coughs> salad first. Um, we're going to talk also about making sure that you don't go into the grocery store hungry. Um, there's a lot of research out there, a lot of studies have demonstrated that people who go into the grocery store hungry mm -hmm. uh, overspend, overbuy, and they tend to buy things that they wouldn't um, ordinarily buy if they um, walked in and they weren't hungry. So variety is really the key. You want to make sure, like I said, that you, um, you know, we're, oops, stop being a creature of habit. We're not, a, we're not dogs. It's not exciting to eat the same old thing day in and day out. Try to be open to new things that you can experiment with. Um, take advantage of uh, <coughs> seasonal specials, like especially now, seasonal vegetables and, and fruits are uh, a lot less expensive um, and uh, a lot better for you. So go for color and variety. Make sure that you're including a lot of different colors. Um, and there are a lot of choices um, like this for, for people who don't really like to chop or, or cook. Um, you can get by um, with uh, finding a lot of things in the grocery store that you really don't have to do a lot of preparation. You have to be selective though. So look for what doesn't need to be chopped or peeled. There are a lot of fruits and vegetables that if you can afford to spend the money on mushrooms that are already sliced or um, broccoli that's already cleaned and maybe portioned for you. The salad bags um, that have the um, portioned uh, salad dressing um, already inside, um, those are a great, um, they're a great uh, 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 option for people who really don't have a lot of time. Uh, again, though, if you side by side compare a head of romaine lettuce and maybe a jar of Caesar dressing and a little bit of Parmesan cheese 
and a few croutons. It might not cost as much as a bagged salad, but just keep in, just realize that there are a lot of good options in the produce aisle that um, might be able to um, help you out as far as time goes. Because when we hit the door after a long day, when we hit the door at home, the last thing we want to really do is spend an hour preparing a, a lengthy meal. And I get that. I, I feel the same way. So these are some of the things that I take advantage of um, when I can afford to do it. Fruit that's, fruit that's already cut up um, and uh, uh, things that are, you know, easy, accessible, and you can just, um, they, they make it easier for you when you get home. So we really want you to color your plate, um, and I don't mean to, uh, it, it, be elementary about this, but it really is important for vitamins and minerals and um, other important nutrient benefits that you really try to uh, to uh, think about your plate and try to make it as colorful as possible. Um, greens, of course, um, leafy greens, peppers, broccoli, uh, lettuce, uh, um, all of these things that uh, oops that. Uh, are green. <coughs> um, we're going to go through the whole spectrum here. So the orange um, squashes, carrots, um, all of your uh, oranges and yellows, um, loads of um, vitamin A, um, loads of, um, again, a lot of vitamins and minerals that come at a very low price tag. Uh, reds, the, especially the good tomatoes that you have in your gardens or that you can get at the produce stands. Um, um, and not just um, whole tomatoes, but you know the sauces, marinara sauce that you can purchase in, um, from a jar. Uh, you, of course, have to consult the label to make sure that there isn't a lot of sodium involved, but uh, all of the um, these red um, things. Um, it used to be a challenge for people to try and come up with blue things to eat, but I mean there are even blue and purple potatoes. I don't know if any of you grow them or you've seen them in the grocery store. They tend to be kind of a conversation piece, but there are blue and purple potatoes. Um, so uh, just uh, if you can, um, and I won't um, belabor it, but just know that there are a lot of options and with each color comes different vitamins and minerals um, that are really um, important. Um, we had a discussion at the beginning about watermelon. Um, we were talking about watermelon before the class started. Everybody who works outside in these temperatures um, probably feels it by the end of the day, and you probably have been lectured about making sure that you stay hydrated and um, try to um, we drink maybe the energy drinks or the, um, the sports um, replenishment drinks and so forth. Watermelon and so forth can be great. Um, it, it does have a really high hydration um, content and a lot of potassium, so um, it is kind of easy to put back some of that if you've been out in the sun. Um, at this time of year, of course, you can find um, all different kinds of varieties of watermelons in the in the grocery store. But instead of taking a pill or um, having some other kind of quick fix, consider some of the things in the grocery in the produce aisle that can do the same benefit, maybe a lot cheap more cheaply. Um, and you still get the, the added benefit along with strawberries and oranges and, and things like that um, to try and put back some of those, um, some of those uh, minerals that you're losing as you're you know, perspiring out in this 100 degree weather. So dairy products. I want to talk a little bit about dairy products. Um, of course they're important. We want to make sure that we're choosing uh, for your own um, for your own information choosing the milk source that is fits most comfortably into into your diet some can't stomach the skim milk um, 
and one to do the 2% or the 1%. Um, if you look at the uh, nutrition labels, uh, it will clearly show you based on a one cup serving, which is standard for milk products. Um, it shows you the difference between skim and whole um, is um, almost twice the calories. So uh, if you can, um, shave calories wherever you can. Keep in mind, it is a balancing act. It's energy in versus energy expenditure. So if you can shave a few calories here and there, that's, um, that's the <laughs> ideal thing to do. Um, there is also fat associated with the whole milk products, um, fat and saturated fat. Um, lower fat tends to mean less calories, so um, just keep that in mind. Cheeses, I get this question all the time about um, calories and which cheeses um, are better um, for me. Um, if you look at Calories per serving, um, definitely um, one tablespoon of Parmesan cheese is usually the, the standard serving size. 61 calories per tablespoon. That comes at a pretty low sodium um, content. Things like mozzarella, um, feta cheese, you can find um, lower fat feta cheese, and you can also find low fat mozzarella. Um, but keep in mind that the sodium content might be high for some of these um, cheeses. If you look on the back of the bag, if you buy shredded mozzarella or shredded um, uh, Swiss, or you buy Swiss cheese, you can actually look at the label. A lot of the lighter um, varieties, some tend to have less sodium um, and less fat. So again, the nutrition label is really your best friend. The nutrition label really doesn't lie. Um, and I have a slide here that talks about reduced fat doesn't necessarily mean low in fat. I mean, there's still going to be some fat there, but they have just taken out a little bit of the, the fat. Fat um, imparts flavor in all of our food products, so you might notice uh, a flavor difference. Um, for me, if I'm cooking, um, I use the whole fat varieties if I'm going to sprinkle it on top of something like a pizza because it does some of the lower fat cheeses does um, do have a little bit of a, um, a different taste it's all it go, all goes based on your own um, preferences though if I'm going to cook something in a casserole or something I might choose a lower fat um, variety but if I'm going to like sprinkle mozzarella cheese on top I might go for the um, the real McCoy so just know that um, the Sargento reduced fat, you can see not really that much of a difference in um, fat and calories. They've kind of taken away a little, but, but not a lot. So um, again, just take a look at the nutrition label so that you can make your best, uh, your best choice. Um, Borson light cheese is, um, a, is light um, if you keep your portion size to one ounce and one ounce isn't a lot. So again, watch your portion, uh, watch your portion um, size on the nutrition label. Um, <coughs> sometimes the lighter cheeses, you may as well just go ahead and get the regular variety if you're not going to be eating a whole lot of, the, of, of it. Um, one place that you really probably won't notice a difference in the flavor is by choosing something like fat-free half and half versus the real version. Um, again, you'll be saving about half the calories. You probably won't notice a difference in the taste. Um, if you do, um, like a lot of people like half and half in their coffee or um, cook with it. Um, I don't know how many people use half and half daily, but it says if you use this product daily, um, the, the fat-free versus the regular half and half, you can save 7,300 calories per year. So, uh, so fat-free sour creams, um, there is, uh, again, it's all your personal preference. If you really like sour cream on your baked potato, um, you might not 
notice the difference in the in the flavor, but you'll be saving almost half the calories. Okay. Sorry, I'm having so much trouble here. Um, okay, comparing yogurt, there definitely is a difference out there. How many of you eat yogurt? Okay, you probably know there are a bazillion yogurt choices in the store. Um, and a lot of them um, I call dessert because they're like, some are upwards of three to 400 calories per cup. Um, just keep in mind um, and that, you know, if you're looking for yogurt as a snack, snack snacks during the day should be like one to 200 calories. Um, so as not to like really interfere with your um, with your meal planning, a lot of these fit and some of them don't. Um, uh, the um, Dannon um, or no, it's Yo Play Light that I like. Yo Play. What about Triple Zero? Yeah. Triple Zero. Yeah. I. The calories. Yep. And if it, and yeah, and if it works for you, that's great. Um, Yo Play Light tends to have about ninety to one hundred calories for. It's a blue Dan and cup with a blue top, and it has ninety to one hundred calories, and it's tasty. Decent size serving, I think it's six ounces. So um, anyway, um, just keep in mind that. Calorie and fat varies widely. You just really have to be a good consumer and you have to choose wisely. Light yogurt is usually lower in sugar, but not always. Um, three different six ounce, there's my Yo Play Light in the center. Six ounce servings, roughly 90 to 100 um, calories and all zero grams of fat. So these would be decent choices. and that tends to be a little bit lower in sugar. Mini yogurts, small size, smaller portion size lowers calories, but a lot of people think that they're just not satisfying. I mean, so you have to eat like five or six of them, so just be careful. Um, just because it says, you know, four ounces has 60 calories, well, if you're eating four of them, then, you know, you're kind of right back where you started. And again, some yogurt is just dessert. That's all there is to it. Um, way more than, way more decadent than what I would consider to be a good dairy serving or a good snack. So just keep that in mind. Protein foods and weight loss, um, sustained weight loss and control are all about making sure that you're eating a reasonably um, low fat and high fiber diet. Um, and that you're getting enough exercise, because keep in mind that no meal plan is gonna work unless you're um, getting some activity. And by activity, I mean um, 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, three times a week. Walking counts. Um, if you have a smartphone, um, I don't know how many of you guys have a smartphone and you have an app on your phone that tracks your steps. Um, you'd be amazed at how far you go in a day. Um, most people say the goal should be 10,000 steps, which is five miles. Um, you'd be shocked. If you, if you have a smartphone and you can keep it in your pocket on silent so it tracks your steps during the day, um, there are a couple of really good apps. Um, Walk Logger is one. Um, the other is MyFitnessPal. Um, if you um, Under Armour, I think, sponsors that one, and they're free in your app store. Um, but they'll help you track your steps um, throughout the day and tell you how far you've gone, and some will even have alarms that will tell you that you need to move. So, um, but a lot of a lot of folks who have jobs where they're they're on their feet every day, um, a lot of people will say, "Gosh, I had no idea." Um, and it all counts. We're not saying that you have to run a marathon. Um, or you, you know, have to go out and jog for miles. <coughs> We're just saying that you have to not be a couch potato. Get up and move. Um, so watch your intake and get up and move. 
those are the two big keys to making sure that your weight loss plan works. Um, there's no magic food group. I would never tell anybody that there that you can't ever have a regular soda or a brownie or ice cream. You just have to keep those things in moderation, and you have to um, make sure that they that they fit in to your overall meal planning. Um, it's all about calories. For most of us, if we're trying to lose weight, if you take your weight right now and you multiply by 10, um, that's roughly around the number of calories um, with some activity um, that you should, uh, you should shoot for. And some people say, oh my gosh, I weigh 150 pounds or I weigh 200 pounds. There's no way I eat 2,000 calories a day. Well, guess what? You probably do. So, um, just you know, that's just a broad <coughs> gauge that we use with moderate activity, ten times your body weight, um, to try and help you to plan three, two to three meals and two to three snacks during the day. So, um, you know, think of it like a checking account. Most of us. Um, you know, if you only have 2,000 calories to spend throughout the day, however you want to spend them is up to you. Keep in mind you have to pack in all those vitamins and minerals and fiber and everything else. Um, but you know what? If you go to McDonald's at lunchtime and get a you know quarter pounder with cheese, fries, and a large soda, you're three quarters of the way to your 2,000 calories. Easy. So. Um, so just keep that all in mind. It's all about the calories and the ener energy in and energy out. Um, and then choosing protein foods that are low in fat. You want to make sure that that sticks in your head. Uh, let's see. Lean protein foods, of course, the fishes, turkey, breast, um, shrimp, beans. Um, when you get down to the fattier meats and things like prime rib and, and so forth, you can see that the calories per gram tends to, um, tend to jump. The leaner cuts of meat, um, the way the meat is graded in the grocery store, prime meat um, and choice are usually the fattier um, cuts. Um, you can save a lot of money by buying the leaner cuts of meat um, and um, uh, uh, tenderizing them yourself and grilling or, or broiling. Um, the meat grading system sort of goes contrary to what we think of when we think of good health choices. The prime choice that everybody's after is usually the one that's the highest in fat and it's the marbling, the fat marbling that we're talking about, so you um, want to choose those less often, maybe, um, and choose some of the, um, uh, you know, turkey and and so forth. I don't know if uh, if anybody likes to uh, likes to eat Italian. Um, in my house, I do half ground turkey, half ground beef. When I make meatballs, I get rid of half the fat that way. And truthfully, I don't know if. I, you know, my guys, I have two grown boys or men. Um, I don't know if they ever knew I did it or not. Nobody ever complained. But it's like, you know, you get rid of half the fat that you don't really need. So there are little things that you can do like that. And it's cheaper now than, than ground beef. So anyway, um, beans are always a, um, a good choice. High protein, great source of fiber. Um, you know, you tend to um, feel one way that you can kind of tend to feel fuller on fewer calories. So, um, you, usually a half a cup of beans is roughly around 100 calories or so. So, it's, you know, that's a good investment. Um, lean turkey, again, ground um, turkey breasts. They're usually two different, um, two different varieties. There's like a 93%. Um, 93% um, um, uh, 80, 80, like ground beef is usually 80-20, um, ground turkey is usually like 93-7, something like that. But um, if you're mixing it in a recipe, um, again, you're still going to get the benefit of the protein at a much lower fat content. So. 
chicken, same way. Um, technically, dark meat tends to be a little higher in calories um, than, um, than white meat. Um, the, uh, you know, if you like fried chicken, um, if you can maybe take the skin off, I know that sounds terrible. It's hard to resist when you see a piece of fried chicken that's already cooked. If you can, you know, go to Popeyes or whatever, and, or Kentucky Fried Chicken, and get that three-piece meal, take the skin off one of the pieces and get rid of it. You're saving yourself a lot of calories and fat. Um, that's where it all hangs out. So, um, anyway, white meat tends to be um, less fatty. Um, the leaner pork. Um, the tenderloin, the loin, um, pork chops, if you, um, pork chops actually on the bone technically are um, a little more flavorful, um, tend to dry out less if you're like grilling or, or sauteing, um, and they tend to be um, a little leaner um, than their um, uh, deboned um, varieties. So you can see the calories and the fat contents on the bottom of the screen. Again, the leanest cuts are the 95% fat-free ground beef, tenderloin, flank steak, things like that. And if you look at the grades, they're probably all graded, I don't know, good or choice. They're not prime because they're lower in fat. Um, three ounces of ground steak, for example, has 163 calories. Um, three ounces of a T-bone steak has about 273 calories and 21 grams of fat. So, um, so there is a difference um, when you're buying meat. Um, tuna, um, of course, tuna and oil is going to be higher in calories, twice as, twice as much as tuna packed in water. Um, so keep that in mind. And light tuna um, refers to the color, not to the calories. So keep that in mind. That's another little manufacturer's trick to try and get you to like tuna. Uh, in the deli, um, turkey, chicken, lean ham, lean meats. Um, try to go for the lower sodium varieties. You don't need the extra sodium. Um, beware of some of the high fat choices and choose those less often. Um, things like bologna and salami, pastrami, um, any prepared meats like the pickle and pimento loaf or the barbecue loaf or whatever. Um, deli meats are usually high in sodium anyway, um, just because of the way that they're processed. So you want to make sure that you try to choose, I'm not saying don't ever eat a bologna sandwich, but I'm just saying maybe don't eat a bologna sandwich every day. So. Grains, if you go into the cereal aisle, um, they usually put um, the sugar cereals right at kitty level, um, and th that's a marketing that's a marketing stunt. Um, the the cereals that are better for you um, tend to be on the upper or or lower shelves. Um, things like you know sugar smacks will probably be right in the center, right at the kids' eye level, so that they beg their moms or dads to to buy them. Um, just make sure that you're choosing wisely here. Um, the grain products that are the lowest uh, in calorie density are the ones that you tend to have to cook. So um, old-fashioned oats that require cooking. Um, um, I. Um, I put oatmeal, I buy the cheap old-fashioned oatmeal and put it in a crock pot overnight and it's perfect in the morning. Um, uh, you know, it's not something that's hard to do and it's much better for you and it's way cheaper um, and way less sugary than um, instant oatmeal um, or even in the quick cooking varieties. Um, so the whole versions of grains tend to be higher in fiber and lower in calories. That's just a, a, a general rule. Um, but the ones that you cook tend to be the ones that are lowest in um, calories. Um, again, more moisture equals lower calories per, per ounce. So cooked oatmeal, about 17 calories per ounce. Um, uh, 
uh, you can see whole wheat bread is probably three times that almost. A bagel is high. Um, packaged cereal tends to be a lot higher as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe cook the way your grandma cooked. You'll save money and usually you'll save calories and, and fat. Um, try to increase fiber with whole grains. Um, sneak in whole grain pasta or try it if you if you you know think that you're having a, you're in an experimental mood. Um, brown rice, of course, um, better for you. Watch out for jumbo sizes because just because you're thinking you're getting a good deal. Um, this, um, this is actually a baked one, but you know there's packaged Otis Spunkmeyer muffins. The next time you go to grab one of those, look at the nutrition label. Um, I'll bet that muffin is over 500 calories. And a lot of people think that that's a decent breakfast. Um, but again, if you only have 2,000 calories to spend every day, you know, that muffin <laughs> might not be that great of a deal. Um, <coughs> And beware of as prepared, because there is a difference um, between calories and fat as packaged versus as prepared. So packaged, rice aroni, for example, packaged has 240 calories and one gram of fat. But if you use the, prepare, the directions to prepare rice aroni, you're actually adding things. Um, 310, it jumps to 310 calories and nine grams of fat. So just um, make sure that you tune into the nutrition label and look at the information for the way that you're going to use that product. Um, hamburger Helper, um, it at least doubles in calories and fat once you get all of the, um, all of the things in the, there that you have to add to, um, to prepare it. Um, beverages, we started talking about juices and, and, um, and sports drinks and, and things of that nature. Water's best choice, obviously. Um, you know, if you can stand it, flavor it with a wedge of citrus or a small amount of um, fruit juice um, if you need to, but water is definitely where it's at as far as any kind of weight loss um, regimen. Um, Choose, if you have to have a soda, choose diet soda instead of regular. I always tell people if you go to a fountain, put half regular, half, and I do it sometimes. I really like the taste of Coke. I do. Um, but I might do half diet Coke, half Coke. That cuts your calories in half. You still get a little bit of the taste. Um, if you really just have to have a regular soda, just Keep in mind that a regular 12 ounces of a regular soda is 157 calories, and that's 42 grams of sugar. Okay, so it's a lot. Most people can be, if they're soda drinkers, they they can be well on their way to weight loss just by limiting the amount of soda that they drink. Is there a sugar intake within a guideline? No, no. How much sugar? No, no. It's not one of those things like one of the macronutrients like carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Um, and it's not required by the body to do anything. So, um, juice the facts. Tomato juice is lower in calories per serving than any of their other, the other juice counterparts. You know, the more mixing you do, the higher the calories tend to get. Um, Try to choose 100% juice when you do. The cocktails tend to be higher in sugar. Uh, um, it takes almost two oranges to make the calories found in one glass of orange juice. I think you were making that point when we, when we were talking before class. Um, one orange is 61 calories. Eight ounces of orange juice is 110. So. Um, plus, you get the benefit of a fi the fiber in the flesh of the orange if you eat the orange. So, you need to decide which one is best for you. Um, this 20 ounce bottle of Arizona iced tea is actually two and a half servings. It goes back to our nutrition label facts. So, the calories per serving is 95 calories, but if you drink the whole bottle, you're actually almost drinking 250 calories. Okay? So, 
keep things like that in mind when you're talking about beverages. So, eight ounces um, of a popular sports beverage. Um, this is Gatorade Frost, has about 50 calories. Um, calories per serving, um, and then the calories per an entire 64 ounce bottle would be 400. So, they have their place for endurance athletes and for folks that maybe do a lot of hard labor out in the sun in really hot, humid conditions. Um, but if you guzzle a huge bottle after a workout, you might have um, almost consumed back the calories you just spent in your, in, in your workout. So you just want to make sure that you're um, mindful of that and maybe using water. Um, uh, or drinking half the amount of the sports drink and the rest water to quench your thirst. So fats, um, uh, you know, it's not really what anybody likes to talk about. Small amounts of things like nuts and flavored oils go a long way. Um, nuts tend to be very high in calories, some of them are, um, but they do add flavor um, um, to your diet. Just Keep in mind that, um, and I and I really encourage everybody to. I would rather, I would rather you save your money and not use things like Benicol and um, Smart Balance and things like that. The amount that has to be consumed for you to get a health benefit it way exceeds what anybody's serving would be. So. I don't even really think it's worth it financially to invest in things like Benicol um, to lower your cholesterol um, or fat intake. <coughs> My suggestion is to buy your margarine, if you're a margarine um, person, buy it in a tub versus in a stick because they add trans fats to make it stay in stick form and that's less healthy for you than if you buy margarine in a, um, in a tub. Um, I buy store brand, better choice or whatever Walmart is, is perfectly fine. Same deal as, you know, some of the name brands. You just need to look at the nutrition facts label. A lot of times you can save yourself a lot of money in this aisle by, um, by, by looking at the nutrition facts label side by side. Um, you'll pay more for a name brand, um, but they all do the same thing. Um, so. Um, try to stay away from stick form. Um, butter, sometimes it's better um, to use butter, um, especially if you cook or if you bake. Um, margarines don't tend to bake well um, because of the water content. So um, my suggestion is to, if you, if you use margarine, um, buy it in a tub. If you do choose light, um, light tub margarine is always the best choice. You can save yourself a few calories. Um, but like I said, look at the stick form. The fat content is higher. Um, and it's usually trans fats that are um, added um, when they hydrogenate oils and fats. That's what makes it stay in the stick form. And it's usually the bad kind of fat that's, um, that's in those sticks that, um, that make it sit that way. Um, so, just keep that in mind. Um, try to control the amount of fat that you do use, um, um, especially for if you like butter on your on your good fresh mm -hmm. corn on the cob. Um, try try spray margarine. Yeah, no calories, no fat. Um, if you squirt, you still get the taste. Um, spray margarine um, in uh, or like pan cooking sprays and so forth. You can do a lot to eliminate a lot of calories from fat by using those cooking sprays instead of um, adding oil or butter or margarine to, to your pans. Yikes! <laughs> Yikes. Okay. So lower fat is lower calories here as far as dressings go. This is where you can do your salad a lot of damage by adding um, you know, especially if you like your salad wet with dressing, um, just keep in mind that they're, they vary widely. Bottled salad dressings vary widely. 
a lot of times the serving size is a tablespoon. I can eat a salad with a tablespoon of dressing. So, um, you know, you will do you will do well by choosing the light varieties. Um, for instance, Hellman's Light versus Hellman's Real saves you half the calories and half the fat. Um, so, this is where you really need to be um, a good nutritional <coughs> consumer. Vinegars, lots of flavor, almost. Um, no calories, no fat, so um, vinegars are great. There's your apple cider vinegar. I was talking about apple cider vinegar. There you go. Apple cider vinegar, no calories, no fat, no sodium. Um, the, it's a great way to make flavorful. Um, if you can get in the habit of maybe making your own salad dressing, that way you can control the fat and you can use, um, experiment with different flavored vinegars. Um, oil and vinegar is always a great choice for salad dressing. Um, that you make yourself cheaper too. Um, everybody's favorite aisle is the potato chip aisle, right? It's hard to eat just one. Um, I usually tell people, um, and what I do at home when I pack lunches is to um, buy the small packs that are like 25 cents or, you know, buy the small that's one serving and one and done, so you're not sticking your hand in the potato chip bag constantly because before you know it, the potato chips are gone and you've eaten a lot of calories and a lot of calories from fat. So, um, baked sometimes is not all that much lower. Um, fat free Pringles um, are lower, but they're not calorie free. So, um, very confusing. Sweets. Okay, so consider total calories um, <coughs> here. Uh, you know, um, how many people like to eat the icing out of the out of the uh, the container? <laughs> Almost two thousand calories in that bad boy. So just be careful. Um, fat free is not calorie free. Um, angel food cake is usually a good choice. Um, but because it's low fat, but it's not uh, without calories. So keep that in mind. Um, still high in sugar and calories, but um, it tends to be lower on the fat side. Um, single serving portions such as low fat ice cream bars and low fat cookies can help with portion control, but again, you need to um, you need to just read the package and you need to be careful. Some of the things now that are being packaged in 100 calorie packages are great because it limits you. It's all portion control, right? So if you have a huge bag of cookies at home and you keep putting your hand into it and eating before you know it, you've overdone it. These um, 100 calorie packages can slow you down. So keep that in mind. And again, sports bars are not diet foods. Um, granola bars, sports bars, um, some of them can be equivalent to candy bars, so keep that in mind um, as well. Um, you have to jog for more than a half an hour to burn off one of these. Um, low carb is not always low calorie. You probably know that if you have um, to watch your blood sugar. Carb Smart ice cream tends to um, still have the calories and the fat. Um, here, the no, ad, no sugar added fudgesicles are actually lower in calories and fat than the Carb Smart um, packages. So they make it really difficult. Again, sugar free is not calorie free either. Um, in a lot of cases, sugar free, what they do is they add extra fat to make it taste better and then the calorie level jumps. So, I'm really moving through here. I wanna make sure that I get you guys out of here and home for dinner, right? <laughs> Just what you wanna do now is go home and eat something. Um, sugar substitutes do save calories, but you wanna make sure that you are not overdoing it in the sugar substitutes. Um, they, um, can save a lot of calories over regular sugar, um, but you have to gauge how much sugar you're actually adding to things. Like if it's just a, t a teaspoon of sugar in your 
coffee or tea in the morning, you're probably not doing that much damage to your, um, to your overall um, meal plan. Um, frozen foods, again, if you choose to eat these frozen foods, look for fewer than 400 calories, right? Um, and three grams or fewer of saturated fat. That's what the American Heart Association um, and the American Diabetes Association would recommend. Um, there are several now that are out there. It's not the old-fashioned TV dinner or Hungry Man dinner, and a lot of them are really quite tasty. So there are also a lot of <coughs> meal kits that often come with vegetables, and all you have to do is add a protein. Um, these can be good choices if you don't use all of the sauce, because the sauce is where the calories and the sodium um, in. So these can be great time savers, but you have to make sure that you can budget them calorie-wise. Almost done here. A lot of frozen foods are high in calories and fat. You can just see the range and the variety. Um, you know, you just have to decide whether or not you can afford it. Just want to say a little bit about veggie burgers because a veggie burger. Um, they actually started serving these at the um, uh, concession stand at the Little League. Um, it caused a huge uproar at the Little League in my hometown over on the Eastern Shore. They started having veggie burgers. <laughs> and it just, I mean, not in place of regular burgers, but, you know, if somebody wants <coughs> a veggie burger. But um, anyway, they, they can be tasty. Some varieties are, and you'll save a lot of calories and fat. We've talked a lot about these. Um, so, produce, definitely more is better. Dairy, choose fat-free or low-fat. These are in your handout. High-protein foods, you want to make sure that you choose low-fat or lean. And grains, remember that anything that you um, cook or choose whole um, are usually best for weight loss. Um, Sugar-free beverages is best. Water is even better. Um, best to limit fat, bakery, sugars. Shop the perimeter of your grocery store. Um, that's where um, you, you tend to not get into trouble, right? Um, bless you. Um, most importantly, eat before shopping. If you go to the store hungry, you're likely to make unwanted purchases. And that's really backed up by a lot of research by the American Heart Association. So, I have a list. I'm done. Mm-hmm.